Dan Borsha begins our special uh, report here on Sky News. He is in Indonesia, not too far from the site where this will happen. Dan, give me some details about what's happened. Paul, the latest information is that the confirmation has come through from the Attorney General as well as the Justice Minister that Andrew Chanmar and Sukumaran and the other seven people on death row in Nusa Kambangan will face the firing squad just after midnight. This has been the first time we've actually had that confirmation here on the ground. Vigils have been held across the country in the hope that the lives of Andrew Chan and Myron Sukumaran will be spared. In Sydney, hundreds turned out at Martin Place calling for the executions not to go ahead. People started arriving here at Martin Place after the sun went down. At one stage, hundreds gathered around the candles, reflecting on photos and paintings of Mayur and Sukumaran and Andrew Chan, and holding out hope of a last-minute reprieve. And at the Indonesian consulate in Melbourne, supporters have turned out to hold a small vigil for Andrew Chan and Myron Sukumaran. Our Melbourne reporter, Simon Love, was in attendance. He filed this report. As the hours draw near to the scheduled executions for the Bali 9 duo, Andrew Chan and Myron Sukumaran. Now, the people here in Melbourne, they've not only been here at the Indonesian consulate, but they've also been across town in Richmond at the St Ignatius Church, where a vigil has been held for the past... Eight weeks. The Australian ambassador, do you believe that they should be recalled instantly? I, yeah, I think after the events of the last few days and, as I said, the contempt that Indonesia is showing, I think anything less, and there is a, there is a strong view, I think probably that's going to need to happen. It doesn't have to be for a long time, these things settle down. I think that will be expected tomorrow now. We really have moved from it being black and white, commit the crime, put to death, to a scenario of rehabilitation or... One of your frustration this evening is about the recalcitrant nature of the Indonesian leadership. The attitude of Indonesia for someone like me, and I suspect a lot of other Australians, at a diplomatic level has really annoyed me uh, and really left me with a really bitter taste in my mouth. One of the failings in the past in the Indonesian relationship is that it's been a relationship dictated more by the headline of the day than the history of the ties. This comes uh, just... Uh... 90 seconds ago from Indonesian television is reports that all members, uh, all of the condemned are at the places where they will die, at the execution site. And it's, it's a remarkably uh, uh, tense, tense time right now. I, I'm struggling to find the words to, to explain just how uh, the emotion in the air and how the, the looks on people's faces is absolutely harrowing. Something that has really come home to me is when I saw those pictures of those crosses being prepared with their names on them and with the dates of the executions on them, the coffins being prepared as well. And pictures have been streamed worldwide. It's just such a torturous tormenting process. There is an interesting report that has broken in the past two minutes. It has not been verified by Sky News, I repeat this, but Indonesia's Metro TV is suggesting that uh, one of the executions may well be delayed, that being the Filipino woman. I'll double check that in a little more information in a second. Uh, Dan Borsha is in Indonesia. What can you say, Dan? The Jakarta Post has just reported that uh, the Republic of Indonesia has executed eight drug convicts and there's a quote from the Attorney General's office saying we've carried out the execution and talking to the, the press on the condition of anonymity. The eight were Indonesian Zanol Abedin, Australian Andrew Chan and Mark Moran. Resident Rodrigo Galate, Nigerian Sylvester Obakalki, Rahim Salami and Garnon Martin Anderson as well. Mary Jane Valesso of the Philippines was spared after a woman who allegedly re recruited her to act as a drug courier gave himself up to police in the Philippines on Tuesday. So the Jakarta Post is reporting the executions have taken place and uh, yes, that uh, the Filipino woman has been spared. There was an inevitability to this, wasn't there, particularly the moment they were moved from Bali to Nusa Kambangan. We just need to sit for a moment and reflect on what's happened, the loss of life, the journey that Andrew Chan and Myron Sukumaran have been on. We've seen it. It's been played out in real time. We've seen the families. We've seen the harrowing ordeal of the families. And now we've seen the finality of this moment. Peter Morrissey is the lawyer for the Bali Nine and he joins us on the phone from Melbourne. Peter, you've just heard the same news that we have. The emotions for you, you knew these two men how has your night been moving towards the inevitable moment of their execution? 
you know, we've um, tried all of the legal options we can. We've tried to keep those alive. Those efforts have been in vain for saving the two beautiful boys. The legal process simply is not as important as their will. And uh, they are may having a display of power during a time of great weakness. Uh, they are showing we are the men. We said we'd execute and we're going to execute and don't worry about the law. They've made that crystal clear in numerous statements and it now looks like they've done it. This has made the political class in Indonesia look terrible and it's made their justice system look like um, a dysfunctional and crooked and hopeless system. Pictures that you can see are coming to us live from Indonesia.